Hi, and welcome back to Power Electronics. This is an introduction to a series of videos that we are going to do on modeling photovoltaic cells and photovoltaic panels. We'll use these models to build equivalent electrical circuits that we can then incorporate into SPICE for our designs. If you like the channel, please subscribe, click the bell if you want to be notified of future videos, and give a thumbs up to the video. If there are other topics you would like covered, please message me or provide comments below. Thank you. If you're looking for more information on the semiconductor physics of photovoltaic cells, I'm going to reference you to Dr. Arno Smet's work at Delft University of Technology. There's a free edX course available online, and the information that Dr. Smets provides on the physics behind the photovoltaic process is very valuable. Here's an overview for this video. First, I'm going to provide the reasons for modeling a photovoltaic cell or panel. We're going to look at the Shockley diode equation because the photovoltaic cell consists of semiconductor material with a PN junction and therefore models the diode. Then we're going to look at the topics that are covered in this sequence of videos. Let's start with the reasons for looking at photovoltaics. First and foremost, we have numerous senior design teams in the electrical engineering program at Milwaukee School of Engineering that utilize photovoltaics and their design pro projects. Having the ability to model that photovoltaic cell or that photovoltaic panel when doing circuit simulations is extremely important. And I'm hoping this material will enable those student teams to be able to incorporate that photovoltaic model prior to looking at their electronic design or their power electronic designs. Photovoltaics have been around for a long time and the cost continues to decline. And we're going to see widespread use of photovoltaics. There's also trends in the power electronics fields with wide band gap devices such as silicon carbide and gallium nitride field effect transistors. This is going to make large scale inverters and micro inverters that much more cost effective. Trends in embedded controllers also promotes the utilization of photovoltaics. For example, it is now possible to put a low cost embedded controller on every single photovoltaic panel making microinverter technology extremely cost effective. We also have energy storage trends such as lithium technology and fuel cell technology. Photovoltaics really require energy storage because the sun is only shining for a portion of the day and we have to be able to collect that energy and somehow store it in a cost effective way. Finally, one of my favorites is electric cars. I predict within the next 20 to 30 years, the majority of vehicles on the road will be electric based. Our current grid cannot support that and therefore we're going to have to look at alternative ways of providing energy for these vehicles. And I think photovoltaics is a prime way of doing that. As I mentioned before, a photovoltaic cell consists of semiconductor material with a PN junction. Therefore, it's important to review the Shockley diode equation that relates the current through the diode to the voltage across the diode. And let me quickly draw a diode here. And I have the anode on top and the cathode on the bottom. And we'll place the voltage across the diode. And that will drive a current through the diode of I sub D. The current through the diode is equal to the reverse bias current I sub O times the quantity E raised to the power V of D, the voltage across the, the diode, divided by N times VT. VT is the thermal voltage of the diode, and VT is equal to K, the Boltzmann's constant, times T, the temperature of the diode, or the PN junction, in degrees Kelvin, divided by Q. Oftentimes for photovoltaic panels, we'll see the temperature specified at what's called standard testing condition, STC, with a temperature equal to 25 degrees centigrade. At that temperature, the thermal voltage is approximately 26 millivolts. 
Also notice the term N. N is called the ideality factor. For a monocrystalline photovoltaic panel, I am going to use for our model N equal to 1.2. For a polycrystalline photovoltaic panel, I'm going to utilize N equal 1.3 for the ideality factor. There are ways of estimating the ideality factor N based on information from the photovoltaic panel data sheet. Finally, we have minus one, and that's to account for the fact that at zero volts across the diode, we will have zero current through the diode. Here's an outline of the videos that are going to be in this series. This first one is our introduction. In the next video, I'm going to provide a simple electrical circuit model for the photovoltaic cell. It consists of a constant current source, and the magnitude of that constant current source is proportional to the radiance on the cell itself. Parallel with that constant current source will be a diode. In the third video, we'll use that simple electrical circuit model and create a spice simulation. And we'll look at a spice simulation for both a cell and for a panel. One of the things we're going to notice is the simple model overestimates the maximum power point. Therefore, we're going to incorporate parasitic losses into the model and we'll estimate those losses from information on the data sheet. Finally, with that more comprehensive model that incorporates the loss, we'll look at a more complex model, although it's not overly complex. And again, we will simulate it in SPICE, and we'll look at both cells and panels with that model that incorporates the parasitic losses. Now for a quick recap uh, for this intro uh, to the series. First, we looked at the importance of photovoltaic technology. Then we reviewed the Shockley diode equation. And finally, we outlined the roadmap for the remaining videos in this series. Thanks for watching.